Is it just me, or does it seem like every baseball film has some sort of sap in it? I mean, can't we have sappiness in other sports films? But no, it seems like Hollywood has some sort of contractual obligation to have some amount of sap in a baseball film. I mean, even in Moneyball there was that one moment. But that contractual obligation was fulfilled in this week's movie club, A League of Their Own. Mm -hmm. Went to uh, VHS with this. Had to borrow it from the family collection, actually. As you can see, uh, it has Gina Davis, uh, Tom Hanks, and uh, Madonna in it, I guess. Uh, interchangeable, if you ask me. Now, a little bit of backstory with this. World War II is in full force, and the United States government mean, needs all the guys they can get into the armed forces to fight the enemy, leaving the women behind to take care of everything on the home front, and that includes the sports. And a league of their own follows the Rockford Peaches through all their trials and triumphs and what they go through. But that's not what we're here for. We're not here to review the film, although, you know, in a way we are, I suppose. Good film, not the best, but not total tripe. No, we're here to settle an office dispute between Meg Turney and Joe Beretta, specifically this point he here in the World Series in A League of Their Own. Which part exactly? Roll clap! Source fed editors, if you could please uh, splice in the part wh where I'm talking about when she drops the ball. I can't edit for crap. Anyone else watching this, do you have any suggestions for uh, video editing material for free or very cheap? I'm all ears. Anyway, cut here. Yeah, that part. So, um, the question is, did Dottie drop the ball when Kit came in to base? No. Here's my reasoning why. Before Kit went up to pitch, Dottie goes up to the pitcher and specifically tells her what her weakness is. Like the fastball, she can't hit it. And when Kit comes around the bases and tries to score the game-winning run, she stands in the way and tries to stop her from crossing. But instead, she gets knocked over and the ball gets knocked out of her hand. Now, another source-fed movie clubber has brought up the good point that even in peewee sports, they're always taught to catch the ball and hold it tight to their chest just so that this instant never happens. A very good argument, sir. But I make the counter-argument is that we... Humans are creatures of habit. We all, the only example I can draw from is swimming, and I was a distant swimmer. And we were always taught never to breathe every other turn, because if you you go like this, every other stroke is supposed to go, not like this constantly. You keep on turning your head up, you gotta lift your head out of the water, you reduce the, you increase the drag on your body, you lose time. Try to keep that up for 500 meters, and you need to take a breath there every time you take a stroke. And Joe, I know you played sports, and I'm pretty sure even you would agree with me that after a long play that you'll start to forget your training. I mean, bear in mind, this is the ninth inning. This is the home stretch here. This isn't like the 12th or 14th. Okay, well, maybe it's the 12th or 14th inning, but still. I still stick by the fact that she played for all the marbles, and she didn't let that game slide. She just got tired. She let instinct play, and if anything, it looked like she didn't have enough time to bring the ball to her chest, and she kind of let her arms flay out before she could get to the base and try to tag her, but knocked the ball out of her hand, and the Peaches lost the pennant. But, all in all, a good film. It was a nice trip down memory lane.